Hey guys, Ryan here back with another video on functional programming and FPTS. So I've spent a lot of time lately talking about the option type and, and how to use it. Basically it lets you represent a value and whether or not that value is missing. So if it's defined or if it's not, sometimes that's just not quite enough. Sometimes it's not enough to know just whether or not the value is defined or if it's missing. Sometimes you also need to know why it's not defined, why it's missing. Essentially what we need is uh, an error message that can help us track when we have a value and if we don't have a value, why. Another way of saying this is we need some additional structure. We need a different data structure that will allow us to do this. FPTS already provides a type that lets us do exactly that and it's called either. So what I wanted to do today is to walk through an example of how you would set up your code using using the either type. And we'll actually take a look at a couple of different ways that you can kind of organize the code. So let's go ahead and set up an example. I'm just going to write out some functions real quick. Okay. So let's say that the situation we're in is that we have a user and we're trying to validate if the user can do something. So I've written some functions, uh, two functions here. One is validate user is verified. Maybe check to see if they've verified through email. And let's say another one is validate that the user has set up two-factor authentication. These are just some examples with some dummy implementations. And I also have a type for the user it just has a verified key on it. The implementation is not what it, what's important here. What's important is how we're setting up these functions and what their signatures are. So the way that this works is for our validate that the user is verified function, we input a user of user type, and we're going to return an either. An either has two internal types. One internal type will be the type of the error message that we want to return in the case where this operation couldn't succeed. And so in this case, we're just gonna use a string. You can use other things, but for now, uh, a string is, is a good way to go. The operation does succeed, then we're gonna return our user back, and that's gonna be the second type. The way that people normally talk about these things is to say that either has two sides to it. It has a left side that represents the error, and then it has the right side that represents success and either can either be one or the other right hence the namesake there's no way that you can carry the data value and have an error message at the same time either you carry the data value or you have an error message so this is our first function i've also set up a second function just to help demonstrate things basically this for this function we just want to check to see if the user has you know set up two-factor authentication Maybe we want to check this to see if they can you know, uh, transfer funds or something. But the signature here is going to be the same. We input a user and we output an either. Now, for this line in particular, um, I normally wouldn't do it this way, but I actually think that it helps to demonstrate the left and the right side of either. Uh, so basically what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, if the user is verified, then construct an either it's going to be the right side, so that represents success. If the user's not verified, then construct an either on the left side where we're going to have an error message. I have more to say about exactly how this is done, but I think I'm going to save that for a future video. Let's see how we can use these functions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up another function that's just going to be validate user. The responsibility here is that we're going to run all of the validations that we need to run on this user in order to do whatever we're trying to do. The way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna open up a pipe operator and what I'm expecting to get out of all of this is an either. Inside the pipe, I'm going to feed the thing that we care about, so that's the user. In order for me to take this user and perform some operations that will be returning either's, there's a few ways to go about this. The way that I'm going to do it is to take this user and essentially lift it into the land of FPTS. I'm gonna lift it up into an either type. That way, once we have an either already in place, 
it'll make it easier to chain on or compose all of our operations together. There are other ways to do this, but for now, I think that this will work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say e of user. And what this function is doing is it's just taking our data and it's just wrapping it in an either. Now, I expect this user to be defined. It should be defined. We've said that it's user type. And so what this should return to us is an either that has the right side set. So it has a user on the right side. We can also take advantage of the pipeable API and say this, um, feed it into the of as, as the next step. So now we have, at this point, an, an either of our user. And what I want to do is to run validation on it. So all of my validations are returning an either back from those functions. So what I need to do is to take this either of an user and call the chain function and call a function, let's say validate user is verified, that will again return another either back to us. Okay. So we can continue doing the exact same thing for our second function too. Let's take a look at what we have here. So there's a couple of things that I really like about this. One is that we've kind of abstracted away all of the exceptional cases, all of the conditionals into these other functions uh, and kind of gotten it out of the way so that now our code actually reads very declarative and it's very clean. We can see what should happen in the best case, which is we get our user, we're going to lift it up to an either, we run these validations, and then we get an either back, which hopefully has a user in it. Another thing that I really like about this is that we've already established a pattern. We only have two validations that we're running, but I would argue that if someone else came in some point at a later date and they needed to add in another validation or maybe remove one of the validations that we have in place, I think it's pretty clear exactly how that should be done, right? I mean, they can either remove it or add, add more, right? You can do as many as you want. Um, so, th so this is kind of nice. I, I really like this method, and, and I've even used it before myself, but if I had to be nitpicky, there are a couple of things that I would point out here. So what are they? One is that in both of these cases, we've taken a user as input, and in the successful case, we've returned the same user in the output. We actually haven't done anything with the user. We haven't modified it or transformed it in any way. So it almost seems a little unnecessary to keep returning the same user back over and over again. Another thing that I might nitpick a little bit is that we have hard coded the error messages into these functions. In some cases that might be fine, but in others we might want to reuse these functions in different scenarios and in each scenario, maybe they have a slightly different error message. And having these messages hard-coded into the function makes them slightly less usable. Instead, let's explore a slightly different approach here, where we're going to do the same thing, but instead of returning an either, I'm just going to return a Boolean. So instead of returning the error message, I just want to return true or false for whether the user is valid or not. What I've done here is I've added two functions. These essentially are rewriting validate user is verified, but now it's in a new function that I'm just calling user is verified. And instead of returning an either, all it does is return whether or not the user is verified. I do the same thing here for user has 2FA. These aren't returning either, so how are we supposed to use them? Well, let's. Uh, I'm going to comment this out. and. I'm going to do the same thing where I drop in a user. I'm going to lift it uh, into the either type. And then instead of saying either chain, since these functions aren't returning an either, they're just returning a Boolean, they're essentially predicates. So I'll call a new function called filter or else. What this is asking for is a predicate that will determine whether or not this either this either type remains in the successful case or if it should go to the failure case. 
So let me drop in my new predicate. User is verified. If this function returns false, then filter or else needs to know what it should set as the left side, as the failure case. So you can just provide an error message for that. We can do the same thing for the next function. Filter or else user has 2FA. A couple of important things have changed here, right? If you look at the functions that we had before, where they were constructing these ethers and kind of passing through the user explicitly, we've actually simplified that down a bit so that now we have these really simple functions that are just returning a Boolean, which just makes them a little bit easier to write, a little bit easier to read. There's just less, less work involved. Secondly, what we've done is we've taken these error messages that used to be hard-coded into the function, and we've moved it up a level, up to the calling code, so that now these messages are specified here. So why, why would that be important? Well, let's say that in one case, we want to use this function to check that the user is verified so that they can post a message. So then our error message might be, user must be verified to post messages. And maybe somewhere else in the application, we also want to check that the user is verified, but for a different reason. Kind of moving the error message up the call stack a bit means that the messages can be a little bit more specific to the context and what you're trying to do, which is nice. In all of these cases that we've looked at so far, we haven't actually modified the user. All we've done is to validate it. In some cases, you'll run into situations where you actually, you do need to modify the type. You're gonna take in one type and transform it into something else. But it's possible that that transformation just can't work. And if it doesn't work, in that case, you wanna provide an error message to, to indicate that the transformation couldn't be made. So let's take a look real quick at what that might look like. So for example, let's say that we had a time represented as a string, and maybe our times look something like this. And what I wanna do is to parse this string into a more structured format. So let me introduce the time type real quick, and I'm not actually gonna fill this out, but the idea is that we're gonna parse the string, and eventually we should end up with this time object. Write a function here that says parse time. This will take in our time as a string, and I'm gonna return in either where the error will contain a, a string as a message, or in the case of success, it returns our new type, the time. Maybe, you know, this doesn't work. Again, in this case, we're actually making a transformation, and I think parsing is actually a great example of where the either type comes into play quite often. But again, we're kind of at the same situation, right? where we have this transform function that has an error message hard-coded in. And it's actually easy to see in this case where you could have parse time being used throughout the application. And what that means in terms of an error message could be very different things. So if you wanted to write parse time in a more reusable fashion, you could, except that this time we can't just return a Boolean, right? We're making a transformation. We actually want to return a new time. What I'll do is instead of returning an either that's hard coded, and instead of returning a Boolean, which doesn't contain any transformation, I will set this up to return our old friend the option. And that option will contain the new time if the transformation was successful. So now, what does this look like down here? So the way that I would set this up is I would say, okay, open up pipe, let's drop in the time. I wanna take this string and I wanna parse it. So I'll call parse time. Parse time, of course, is going to return an option. And what I would like is an either because I want an error message. So what I'll do is I'll say E from option. And what this is asking for is, okay, I can take this option and I'll turn it into an either. In the case where the value is missing, what should I put as the error message? And so I'll tell it. It's not a good time. Okay, so the point is, in this case, we have a transformation that's taking place. 
So we didn't have the option of using a predicate. We actually needed a transformation that would return a new type. But instead of just returning an either type that has an error message built in, I can return an option here, keep the function reusable, and give it that additional structure, an error message, at the call site. This way, I could change the error message to be more specific about what I'm trying to accomplish here. So I think that that's gonna wrap up this video for either. Uh, again, I do have another video that I plan on making around uh, why I don't really like this way of, of constructing eithers and how I would do that in an alternative way. So if that's something that you're interested in, like and subscribe. I hope this was helpful and I will see you guys next time.